Hello, so today we're going to do a bit of house maintenance here, getting ready for the uh, upcoming winter. So uh, what we're going to be doing is putting on some roof guard, which is uh, prevents ice dams on the edge of the roof. So it's an electric uh, roof and gutter de-icing cable. Just reading the uh, description here. So this one is 200 feet long. We'll talk about uh, how I picked the uh, length. I bought the biggest one and uh, how we're going to install it. So uh, let's take a look at the house here. So this house uh, is a story and a half, so there's a knee wall fairly deep into the wall. And I get a big ice dam on this side of the house, up on this uh, valley, which we'll take a peek at in a minute. It's not necessarily a problem with the house. Everybody on this street has the same problem on this uh, face of the house. So uh, I tried to do all kinds of different things to stop it from happening. I added that vent there in the... Uh, open space in the attic. It's about eight feet in actually where the knee wall starts. So uh, we don't need to run the uh, heating strip that far. We're gonna run it in about uh, three feet in basically. Then go, uh, you have to lay it in the gutters. You gotta come down the, uh, the drains. But it can't touch anywhere. It has to uh, be spaced apart. We provide clips for that. So when you do your site survey, make sure you know where the electrical is for the house. So I have overhead electrical, you may not be able to see it, but it comes up uh, along the other uh, side of the house, which is pretty close to the, the gutter on that side. So we always get a big ice dam in this uh, valley here. And uh, I go up there once a year, and kind of remove it as much as I can, but uh, the spring thaw is a bit uncontrolled. So you do your site survey, you measure everything out, which I've shown. You come up here and clean the leaves out. Hose out the gutter. And uh, we'll go take a look at my calculations. So I've never used this stuff before. I'm just kind of hoping to avoid it. Like I said, I've done a few different things to attempt the, uh, resolving the ice dam and none of them worked. So uh, when you look at this stuff, actually they make a 240 foot piece. It wasn't available at the store. Kind of wish I got that because the 200 footer is not long enough. So you have to measure what uh, your overhang is going to be. I tried 48 inches, but it wasn't going to be long enough just from a calculation perspective. So 36 inches is a 4.2 factor, which we'll take a look at kind of measure it there. Do a, a single cable installation. They nail you by the number of cables you buy. You can get one cable pretty much any length for the same price. If you buy two cables it gets expensive. And that would be this option here. But trying to map it out without it touching anywhere when you're doing two valleys is a bit of a, a problem. So measured the uh, house out here. It's a modest home, it's about a thousand square feet. It's a war house that was built for uh, the uh, Manhattan Project actually, up in Chalk River area, to develop uh, nuclear research. So anyway, it's about a foot, seven feet, seven feet, 11 feet wide, and then the drain on this end will be 20 feet because it's gonna go up and down. It's gonna go down the drain into the receptacle on this end. So the edge is 26 feet, the valley's or uh, 9 times 4, 36, drain, I guess I re-jigged that to get 30 feet, I had to save a bit of cable doing that. Roof edge factor, I tried 5.1 which is like a 4 foot overhang and it went too high, 224, it's not going to work. I'm going to try a 4.2 factor, of gives you 201 feet so I have like no cable to spare and where the receptacle is means I'm going to lose on the edge where I need it the most, which is kind of unfortunate. So I got to be very uh, cheap with this cable. So I tried mapping it out a couple different ways. Basically I'm going to go up the uh, drain, across the gutter, over, do a couple wiggles, up the valley. Now this, I got to go across the front of the roof actually, unless I scoot up here and back or something and do a crisscross. But again, they can't touch. I might probably have to do it this way. 
and then uh, end over here somewhere. And that'll pretty much use up my whole 200 feet. I thought I was being generous when I bought the longest one, but uh, it turns out not so much. But anyway, the, the goal here is to get the water to come off of, uh, sorry, the ice to come off when it comes up to about freezing. So in the spring, you'll get like an Indian summer and then a couple other warm days and the ice starts to melt and uh, it just makes giant icicles and it's not good for the house. It gets a, a bit of an ice dam, a bit of water has come in, which I, I tried to resolve other ways and I just can't do it. So we're going to put this thing in here and hopefully this works. So uh, I'll get the uh, gutters cleaned out and uh, basically you clip it onto the shingles using these and you use these to separate it along the gutter and in the uh, the drain pipe again you also kind of clip them on I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to know yes you need to have a gfi uh, receptacle if you don't have one you really should replace all of your outdoor receptacles on your house with gfis because uh, that could easily save your life and uh, it's absolutely worth it and then that's like the termination on the end. Oh, before you plug or install this, you do want to uh, stretch it out and plug it in and uh, make sure it's not touching anywhere. 200 feet is a bit of a, a task to do that. And uh, just verify that it warms up a little bit to the touch. Then you know you've got a good one. You don't want to spend the, the day installing this thing to find out that you've got a dud. And uh, there's lots of different manufacturers that supply this stuff. This is uh, what's available at the Home Depot in Canada, but uh, I'm sure it's applicable to all brands. It's not like a new technology or anything like that. So uh, yeah, we'll get things cleaned up and I will lay out the clips. All right, so I got the uh, leaves yanked out of the gutter here on the one side. I just want to talk about the ladders for a minute. So this ladder here is a big heavy ladder. It's a 32 foot ladder, class two. So like when it's folded up, it's uh, probably 18 feet long or something. So I wouldn't recommend buying one of these unless you really needed it. Because uh, it's hard to transport. You got to put it on top of a vehicle. You can barely move it even in the back of a pickup truck. It sticks out so far. I had to uh, buy it in order to do the uh, install that window and paint up above uh, that area. This fiberglass ladder is pretty handy. But it's a sadly a little bit too short so there's some regulations here you should verify for your own area but uh, in Ontario I think you need to have like four rungs of the ladder sticking up above the uh, edge if you're gonna get off the ladder and onto the roof then you're supposed to use fall restraint or fall protection or something along those lines because uh, a fall from that height would be fatal so uh, I'll admit I don't use fall protection but uh, when I did the roof on this house, I put in uh, the uh, like the boards for walking on with all the braces and everything. Because this roof is like a 12-12 pitch. It is a pain in the butt to work on. It took me like a month to replace the roof on this house. So there's that. And uh, in the industrial regulations, you're allowed to work from a ladder, I believe. But in the construction regulations, uh, you are not allowed to work from a ladder. So in Ontario, you'll see them when they build a house. They have like a, a jack system with the elevated platforms. Even to put on the siding on a house, it's only like eight feet tall. You're not allowed to work on a ladder. So uh, keep that in mind when you're working from the ladder in this job, unfortunately, because you wouldn't, you couldn't sit on the roof and put your head down. You just roll off the edge as you'd find out quite quickly. So uh, you need to be able to access the edge of the roof and uh, don't lean far on either side of the ladder you really want to be just perpendicular you want to have a good angle on the ladder if you've never worked from a ladder don't watch this video and do this job I don't know that you want to do this as your first job you should get some uh, experience doing other ladder work first I would think or have someone knowledgeable around with you because uh, this height is enough to kill you absolutely happens all the time it's like a number one thing for uh, construction accidents other than slips trips and falls which are always going to be an issue so uh, 
go up there with the uh, garden hose and we'll just wash out this gutter and then move on to the next side. All right, so it'll be a little bit hard to hold the camera while I do this, but let's take a look inside the gutter. So the gutter has caulking onto the uh, fascia so that the water doesn't come down and go around. I did not run the shingles off far enough. I think this is the first edge I started. It hasn't been a problem other than uh, it doesn't look right. And here's your uh, downspout. So we'll just run a bit of water in here. It'll slowly just fill up and then uh, come back because it's all sloped towards the, uh, the drain. They should do this every year anyway. So uh, I'll take care of this and we'll get on with calling the clip. Alright, so this is the other side of the roof here. So uh, if I was to put a vent in the uh, knee wall area on this side, it ended up it'd be electrical problems in the way. There's a range hood in the way. Wouldn't work out very well. So one thing I wanted to mention is there's electrical wire here. And you always assume that the insulation on the wire is bad. You don't... Uh, ever expect that it's good and it's safe to touch. This is just the 120 house wire wiring going into the uh, meter but like do not go anywhere near anything higher than that voltage which is like 120 240. Like, don't be going anywhere near a pole line or anything like that. You really you need to know what you're uh, dealing with but uh, the service entrance to a, a home with a breaker panel shouldn't be a problem. So uh, Let's go and clean this up and we'll get on to the next step. Alright, so I got the uh, cord all stretched out here. I've still got to spend a fair bit of time smoothing it out. I found that to uh, stretch out the cord, the best option is to uh, place the uh, center tab somewhere and then just start pulling from there. I started off with the receptacle end and that wasn't going very well. It was on the outside of the loop. So if you pull from the inside of the loop, that works pretty good. If you had like a, a spindle, that would be even better. Then you wouldn't get all these uh, curls here, but uh, didn't have that available. So I'm going to have to spend a bit of time uh, stretching this out. So now we'll just uh, plug it in. It's not touching anything. Didn't get it braided anywhere. The old GFI receptacle. Hopefully we can get this in and it doesn't pop. You just have to hold past that connector there and see if it uh, warms up or not. This draws like 8 amps of uh, current, so that's fairly significant. Just feeling with my hand here. Guess we'll know when it's warm. Feels like it's warming up, but it could just be uh, my imagination. So I move my hand a couple times here. Yeah, it's definitely getting warm. Yeah, so it takes uh, say about a minute for it to warm up. You can get a controller that you can plug in so it monitors the outdoor temperature. Because you only have an issue when it gets close to freezing, where I live anyway. So you don't want to run this all the time, it costs you a fortune. It's only uh, a key times. So I'll just uh, unplug that and get to the clips. Alright, just getting ready to open up the bags of clips and put them on the roof. And I realized something I didn't uh, spot at the beginning. It looks like when they tell you to measure the overhang, this uh, factor doesn't matter measure the uh, horizontal overhang it's actually on an angle so when I put the clips on I'm going to be going up uh, 37 inches basically the overhang plus uh, one inch I've got standard three tab shingles so I suspect that this is going to work out mathematically so uh, you can see the way they do it you don't do like the bare edge so basically You'll measure in uh, about a tab or so to do the first part. 
So anyway, we'll figure it out and then I'll show you how it gets laid out in the end. All right, starting to install the clips here. So uh, I've got a part shingle at the beginning. So I moved on to the next full shingle. They say to have it between one and two feet apart. So that's basically uh, two tabs apart or a single tab apart. And I think uh, that the two tabs should be adequate here. I was going to go with uh, 36 inches, but if you do two tabs, depending on how far you're going, you might end up uh, on a slot right between the tabs. So the 36 inches is actually one step above where I've got this clip. And uh, I decided I didn't want to hang it off the uh, edge of uh, a tab of the shingle, so I went down one lower. So that'll help me with my distance so quite a bit, I imagine it'll add up quite a bit. They say to do it when it's fairly warm out. It's like 10 degrees Celsius out right now, and the tabs are a little brittle. you got to be a little careful, because like obviously there's, they're glued down, right? About there, when you put them together. So, uh, yeah, you got to spend a bit of time to play around with that. Then when you're done, like they say to put them beside each other, it's not that easy because uh, like you have to fold this up and back down again. Let's see the profile like that when you're uh, done. So you can't really have them side by side unless you just slide that down afterwards. They say to like kind of push on the shingle a little bit so that it can uh, push down on it like this so that it can bite into the shingle. Anyway, um, so I got a, a long ways to go. And then with the 12-12 pitch working off the ladder, I could really only reach that far anyway. If I wanted to get to the next tab, I was going to be putting myself in jeopardy. And I wasn't going to do that for the uh, roof. So we'll carry on. Alright, not much to see what the, the clips are in. I have to try to remember what the uh, organization is when I go to put uh, the uh, cable on. So one thing I found is that you can kind of pull from this side while pushing with that side with both hands. And you kind of scooch them underneath of the uh, shingle. And you push it down like that to uh, get it to bite into the shingle. So now we'll uh, try to figure out how to get all this cable laid here. All right, my artistic rendition of how I'm gonna do this. So I found out a way to do this with a, a single piece. So I'm gonna come up, go across the eave, do the first little bit of the roof, go up the valley, back down, zigzag a bunch, down the gutter and up, cross the next gutter, around the corner in the gutter, zigzag a bit more, up the valley and down the valley again, and then if I don't get this little bit here, that is okay. That's uh, the least important area as far as I'm concerned. So this uh, works out so that uh, regardless of where this stuff ends, I'll be all right. And if I have too much, I can just tuck it down the uh, drain and there will be no uh, extra stuff hanging around. All right, turns out that step one might be the hardest part of uh, getting this cable in. So in order to get the uh, cord end down this uh, drain pipe, I take a piece of string and a chunk of brass fitting here to uh, pull a string through and then I'll pull the uh, wire in behind it so that it comes down down the uh, drain up and into sorry into the uh, receptacle so you want to make sure that the uh, cable is not going like straight down and into the receptacle because it'll bring water in with it and go in so you want to have a a nice drip loop at the uh, the bottom here so that the uh, water can't get into the uh, electrical box. All right, so I'm uh, fishing the heating cable now here through the uh, bottom of the first drain system here. Eaves trough. Ran it out to the uh, street and back a couple times. Probably can't see that from here. Then uh, threw it over the roof because the way it's going to work is that I won't need to fish it underneath of the uh, supports for the eaves trough until I'm on my way back <clears throat> on the other side. So I'll pull it all over, get it across. It snags fairly easily on these uh, ribs, so be careful with that. And now when I'm pulling it over the roof, it would be helpful if I had my wife out to kind of guide this again so it doesn't snag on any uh, sharp edges. All right, just working up the uh, first valley here. It's kind of tricky to keep it from uh, spiraling, so that's why uh, when you unravel it, take care to avoid uh, getting too many twists and kinks in it. Of course, you don't want any kinks in uh, any wire. 
This wire is flat, so it's a little more obvious if it's uh, twisted over. So, uh, and when you're doing straight runs, again, it makes it very obvious. So I'm going to come back and put some more clips here, just to tidy it up for appearance purposes. Zoom out again. Just working my way down, then I'll start doing the zigzags across that section and back through the uh, east trough and over. Alright, things are coming along. I found that once you get the uh, clips uh, clamped onto the cable, you can slide them beside each other. That keeps them from touching. I gotta hook it into the uh, east trough heater on the way back. You almost need a spotter to tell you whether you're putting your uh, ladder on the cables. I haven't pinched one yet, but it's uh, going to be pretty easy to do. I might need to find a different way to uh, put the ladder up against the roof after I do this. Got a few more steps over there. Working the kinks out as I go. But uh, there's a few more down there. But it's going pretty quick actually now that I've got things set up. All right, just getting ready to do the first downspout. So I did a little sweep here in the uh, east trough and a little clamp just to hold it from falling, pulling it off the roof. Now I got to go probably every foot and uh, put one of these clips on here. And we'll see if I can shove this down the uh, drain or if I'm gonna need to pull her through with a rope. All right, I was able to get the uh, drain spout heating through without using a rope. I was able to push through it fairly easily. So now I got a fish a heating cable underneath of the uh, bars here along the east trough and whoop, use those clips that fell on the ground to tie up into each of these so that the water has a continuously heated path all the way out the drain. All right, I guess we're about ready to wrap up the video. So uh, after I put that down the uh, drain, I put the clips on the droop, drip loops that came down into the gutter or the east trough. And uh, gone as far as that one. I gotta go around the corner and zigzag back up and over. But uh, I think time is out for today. Sun's starting to set. And it's getting a bit too cool for my back. It doesn't like me uh, working outside sometimes. And today is one of those days. So, uh, like anything, it's easy enough to do, but it can be hard to make it look good. So I'm going to come back uh, next weekend when I'm home again and uh, put on as many clips as necessary to make this thing look tidy. And uh, that'll be it for the uh, project, but this is uh, it for me with this video. Thank you. Bye.